This right here is the HP Victus 15. There are few laptops that have as dramatic of a legacy in the gaming laptop world as the HP Victus series that after all represents one of the best entry level gaming laptops we've seen in a while, which is why I wanted to see how the 2024 version fares as well. The configuration we have here is rocking AMD's Ryzen 5 8645HS processor, 16 gigabytes of speedy DDR5 memory. We've also got a modest 512 gigabyte SSD NVIDIA's RTX 4050 graphics with 6 gigabytes of VRAM. We also get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.3 standards. And finally, this is a 15 inch display with a full HD plus resolution. Now, like I mentioned, the Victus 15 has quite the legacy behind its name. And we're gonna see in today's review if this iteration can live up to all the predecessors hard work and effort. So let's see what this laptop is all about and whether or not it's worth your hard earned cash. The HP Victus 15 comes in some pretty standard looking cardboard packaging, but hey, at least the box is pretty fancy looking with that black color, I suppose. Nonetheless, once you open it up behind some more protective packaging, you will of course find the crown jewel, the Victus 15 itself, but more on that in a quick minute. You also have a understandably large 200 watt charging adapter with a barrel pin connector. And again, given this is a gaming laptop, this is totally fair game. You also get the standard wall outlet charging cable piece and some basic documentation. The HP Victus 15 continues to use roughly the same design as the 2022 and 2023 models, but it still looks pretty up to date in 2024 and you know the older design elements aren't necessarily a bad thing over here. The black color combined with the linear edges as well as the symmetrical look just really give this laptop a pretty noble look generally speaking. Now it is a entry level gaming laptop so it does have a full plastic build, but the good news is that its weight is just under 5.1 pounds making it ever so slightly less heavier than the average 15 inch gaming laptop. Starting with the top side, like I mentioned, a pretty simple black lid here. It is all plastic. It's also fairly fingerprint resistant, which is always a good thing in my opinion. And you'll also notice you have that classic shiny or reflective V logo for Victus, of course, which actually looks very nice and premium. You get your fair share of IO ports over here. So on one side, you've got a HDMI 2.1 port. You also interestingly enough, get a ethernet port, which is nice. You have a USB-A super speed port and a type C port with power delivery and display port 1.4 functionality. On the other side, you have the charging port, a USB-A super speed port, and then of course a good old headphone jack. And additionally, you also get a full size SD card reader, which if we're being honest, should be standard across all gaming laptops. The bottom side of this laptop, again, very much the same as previous models. So we've still got that larger than life air vent here, which is kind of dramatic because the actual fans are only really on the right corner, but you know, why not? You'll also notice you have the standard plastic lid and then you have two bottom firing speakers, one on either corner. When you unfold this laptop, you really appreciate the large palm rest you have here. If you don't know any better, you might be fooled into thinking this is a 16 inch laptop because of the optical illusion all that space creates. At the center, you have a nice large trackpad as well. Unfortunately, it's still a plastic surface one and a very flexy one at that. So there's a lot of flex going on here, which just doesn't feel very high quality. Thankfully, it does have some tactility. I guess there's that good news, but I guess if I was HP, my defense would be, who even uses a trackpad with a gaming laptop? Shh. Well, yeah. The keyboard over here is decent in my opinion. So you've got, I guess, kind of smallish keys over here because of the more compressed layout of the 15 inch form factor. I've never been a big fan of the font that HP uses with their gaming laptop. That's a personal preference, no hate there. And then you'll also notice the keyboard is fully backlit, which is nice and it's quite bright, mind you. You also get the inclusion of a full size 10 keypad, so great for productivity. And then you also have that artificial speaker grill on the top, it's not actually a speaker grill. It's not even a passive cooling vent. It's just HP doing HP design things. Now, as far as the actual typing experience goes, I'm happy to report you get a decent amount of key travel and a decent amount of tactility as well. It's not gonna be the best keyboard you've ever used, but for gaming purposes as well as general productivity, it's pretty good. The hinge quality of this laptop is about as reliable as the current economy. It wobbles a ton, it's loosely put together, and it honestly feels like it is going to get bad over time with wear and tear. So make sure you're gentle with it if you do get this laptop. Now you have a unnecessarily large chin at the bottom for no good reason whatsoever. Thankfully, the narrow bezels on the sides are immersive and feel pretty crisp with the rest of the design. And then at the top, you have a relatively thin forehead as well, at the center of which you'll find a sub 
subpar 720p webcam, but to be fair, HP is still better than a lot of other companies which still don't include a webcam with a lot of gaming laptops. Asus. The display here is about as good as you'd expect an entry-level gaming laptop's display to be. I mean, to be fair, this laptop is significantly cheaper than a laptop that would have a more premium display in the gaming world. So you've got a full HD display here with a high-quality IPS panel and some pretty good viewing angles. You've got a refresh rate up to 144Hz, allowing for an optimal gaming experience, though you only get a peak brightness of up to 300 nits, which isn't very bright. Thankfully, you do have a matte finish with an anti-glare coating, so that does help quite a bit. Now in the color department side of things, you've got a 62% sRGB rating. Needless to say that colors aren't going to look particularly flush or vivid over here. And while this laptop should be pretty good for general productivity and gaming needs, I would not recommend it for creative or color sensitive purposes. A quick recap of the performance specs. So for this model, we've got AMD's Ryzen 5 8645HS. That is such a long name. It throws me off every time. We've also got 16 gigabytes of DDR5 memory and NVIDIA's RTX 4050 with 6 gigabytes of VRAM. Depending on where you are, this laptop also comes with lower end GPU configurations, higher end Ryzen configurations, and Intel variants as well. The general productivity capabilities of this machine are obviously going to be super fast and snappy, so we won't spend too much time entertaining that. More demanding activities like programming and code compilation, again, thanks to a powerful CPU, are super smooth and efficient. More demanding activities like 3D rendering and modeling, again, totally possible thanks to having an onboard GPU, which makes a day and night difference. Even the most demanding activities like 4K multi-layer video editing, for the most part, was a pretty smooth experience with this laptop. So programs like DaVinci Resolve can easily handle multiple layers without too many frame drops. Now, once you do start adding stuff like color grading, you start seeing limitations of the Ryzen 5 processor. In those cases, a Ryzen 7 would definitely be of more benefit. But generally speaking, a very powerful experience. I'm going to guess you bought this laptop for gaming needs, just a hunch. But all jokes aside, it is a pretty capable device. Now, look, the RTX 4050 is not the kind of GPU you get for high performance gaming. It's the kind of GPU you get to be able to run any modern day title with the and settings. A great example is a game like Doom Eternal, a AAA title that smoothly can run on higher settings with a consistent 120 plus FPS on that full HD display, making for a great gaming experience. More CPU intensive games like City Skyline 2 also do pretty good despite having the middle end Ryzen 5 processor here, though you will notice if cities get very populated, you do start seeing again small limitations with the Ryzen 5 where the Ryzen 7 or Intel's i7 model might be a better choice. And then games like Counter-Strike 2 for example, which are super optimized and not so demanding, you can easily exceed well over 160 FPS with high settings, truly utilizing that 144 Hz display. And then you also of course have games like Fallout 4, which are older AAA titles that can be completely maxed out, giving you frame rates well north of over 90 FPS, providing for a very nice experience and truly justifying the point of getting a lower end GPU like the RTX 4050. I believe AMD truly shines in the thermals departments. For example, under unrealistic peak loads, this laptop hit a average surface temperature of just 41 degrees Celsius, which is pretty nice for a gaming machine. More realistic, loads will yield you around 38 degrees Celsius, again, a pretty healthy number. Now, fan noise is pretty good as well. So yes, you can hit a maximum fan noise up to 59 decibels under peak loads, but you don't hit that number too often unless you are doing long gaming sessions or 4K video editing. So the thermal management here is pretty effective and efficient. As far as self upgradability options are concerned, you do get two Sodium DDR5 slots over here, which are obviously occupied, but you can max it all the way up to 32 gigabytes of memory. You can also upgrade the one existing M.2 slot to a maximum of two terabyte storage capacity. And yes, the Wi Fi module is also M.2 based, so that can be upgraded as well. With a medium sized 70 watt hour battery, you can realistically expect a runtime of just around six and a half hours, which actually isn't a bad number you got to keep in mind this is a high performance laptop so battery life isn't going to be great and if you're shameful enough to actually game on battery you can expect no more than one to one and a half hour of runtime so please don't now as far as speaker quality is concerned you'll get a decent amount of volume and a decent lack of distortion in a good way but these speakers aren't anything to write home about they are bottom firing speakers here's a quick sound test for reference and live your best life all right don't just let it go by just try oh my got only one life got only this time we gonna get it right you gotta let go of those who don't belong in your tribe so 
cut the bad out of your life. Can't do it one time, one time. With an approximate retail value of 1,000 US dollars for the configuration of the HP Victus 15 we have here today, I honestly believe this laptop gets all the things that matter the most right, despite having certain flaws. Performance, for example, is great. Whether you're playing AAA titles that are both new or old or modern day mainstream games, they all run at relatively healthy settings in terms of graphics while maintaining high frame rates. This laptop has exceptionally well done thermals. Part of this is credited due to AMD as well, but again, it doesn't get too hot. It and thermal throttle a lot, which is a really important factor with gaming laptops. You also get a decent selection of IO ports and the trackpad keyboard as well as the general build quality isn't too shabby either. Now granted, other metrics of display like the poor color quality or low brightness or the fact that that hinge mechanism seriously needs to be tuned and improved kind of hold this laptop back from being the perfect gaming laptop. But again, if you're willing to overlook those limitations, then you'll find this to be an otherwise great laptop. And by the way, depending on where you are, this laptop has a ton of configurations, both with AMD and Intel. So the model I might have reviewed might be slightly different from the configuration you have, as well as the pricing as well, since this laptop frequently goes on sale, which is always a good thing, of course. Nonetheless, though, let me know what you think of the latest HP Victus 15. And if this is a laptop you think is worth investing in 2024, Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking this video. Catch you in the next one.